No genetic data is going to tell you that you are Jewish. Read on. For through that country, there was a great way to go. For through that country was a great way, a long way to go. Coming from all the way from all the way from the, uh, the Persian Gulf, coming on all the way down to uh, Africa, the, uh, the coast of Africa, the tip of Africa. It was a long way to go. Read on. Namely, of a year and a half. And it took them a year and a half. Why? Because they had to make stops to get what? Water and maybe food. So it took them a year and a half to get from the east all the way to the west, which is known as the Americas, the New World. Read on. And the same region is called Osiris. And that same region is called Asher, meaning another land, which is known as America. That's the land that came to the Americas. Read on. That's it. So that was it, showing you how the tribes came over to the New World. It took them a year and a half to get from the east to the west. Now the Israeli government, with the help of Jewish organizations, believes it's found members of the lost tribe of Manasseh. They're called B'nai Manasseh. And Chris Mitchell has their story now from Jerusalem. You're seeing members of the lost tribe of Manasseh come back to the Promised Land. Recently, they joined with family members who had already immigrated to Israel for a tearful and emotional reunion at Israel's Ben-Gurion Airport. This group is part of the largest group in the tribe's history, 218, to return from India and resettle in the land I think of what's Israel. happening today is nothing less than a miracle of biblical and historic proportions. Michael Freund is the chairman of Shavei Israel, an organization dedicated to bring lost Jews back to Israel.
blessed. I I came into this village and the first word I heard was shalom. Yes. The Hebrew word. Yes. How is that possible? How is it that the, the Lembas speaking Hebrew? The Lembas are the original Hebrew. The Lemba story goes like this. Thousands of years ago, they were forced out of Israel and settled in a place called Sena, which is believed to be the present day Yemen. There, they lived as traders and craftsmen until war or natural disaster pushed them across the Red Sea and into Africa. Then began a slow migration south. Along the way, according to the Lemba, they built great stone cities. It's a claim that's fascinated archaeologists. Why? Because the ruins of ancient stone cities still exist in southern Africa today. It's also where I need to be exploring next. I had no idea how big this site was. To help me make sense of it, I've asked historian Dr. Magda LaRue to come with me to the site. She's been studying the Lemba for years and has just published a book on the similarities between their social customs and those of the Old Testament Israelites. So Magda, there are specific parallels between the, the religious practices of the Lemba today and the religious practices of ancient Israelites. Definitely. They've got remnants of an ancient type of Israelite religion. So in a way, wow. they conserve this very special yeah. ancient type of religion. It's like old religion. school religion. Yes. But how do they maintain that religious, that religious identity? How did they keep it intact for so many years when there was this long journey from Israel down to South Africa? You see, that's, that's, the, the, that's the question. I think it's by means of the, the oral traditions. But they kept themselves separate from other groups. They lived with other peoples, moving with them, migrated southwards. That is one of their salient characteristics, that, is that they keep up their culture. They just live it. It's hard to believe that these people, who to the casual observer look just like the other African communities they live among, actually do have DNA passed down from Middle Eastern forefathers. This proves that when it comes to race, looks really can be deceiving. This annual festival is a chance for the oral history and traditional songs of the Lemba to be passed on to the next generation. This song tells the story of the Lemba's journey all the way from Israel to South Africa. Having traced this journey, I'm eager to hear what Samuel Moetti thinks about the DNA evidence. So the genetic testing actually proved to the doubters what you and your forefathers have been saying for generations. That must be exciting news. It is. I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of the Lemba. I knew very little about the people. But having spent time making the journey from Jerusalem down through Zimbabwe, having spent time here at this festival, seeing what your people are all about, I can only sum it up in one word, and that's shalom. Shalom. Christ is not a so-called white man. Matter of fact, we're going to go and read some of the scriptures. All the children of Israel were so-called black people. 